Hello and welcome back to Space Engine Days. So a brand new update has been released and as per usual a brand new DLC pack has come along with it. We are once again returning to the decorative block packs with decorative block number 3. That's what I set up all around this platform. So we've got a bunch of very lovely blocks where a lot of the blocks, especially the inset blocks, have double functionality so depending on where you're looking at it and how you set up in your base in your ship will depend on what you actually have access to. We'll see that a bit later on. So without further ado, grabbing hold of my character, we're going to start over with the recolorable solar panels. Well, it comes in three different flavors. We've got our standard rectangle, then we've got two triangles, where if you were to put these all together, you could get a traditional pirate ship and use these as solar sails if you really wanted to. If we were to bring the free camera all the way up to it and get close to look at this one, we see how it's been separated into different sections. But looking down at the bottom, we see our indicator showing its efficiency. Then moving all the way up, there we go. It's going to be the same on the rear of it, but if you were to look on the side of this, what we get is something slightly different. It's a very scaffolding look where it looks like you could move around on the inside, but it does also feature some tiny bits of detail they wouldn't normally see. So putting the camera all the way through, we've got this lovely little radiator type thing, where yes, it's just a tiny bit of detail that you wouldn't normally see. Anyway, coming across to this one, this is the triangle one, where it's been separated into three different sections. And yes, the way the colouring works on this is simply the same as any other blocks. So you press P, then select one of your colours up here, then you just go middle mouse click and it changes the solar panel. Anyway, over to this, this is the alternative to the wind turbine, called the twin blade turbine, where it does look bloody magnificent as it spins all the way around. It is a lot bigger than the traditional wind turbine, so it will take up a lot more room, and it will stick out like a sore thumb, considering how big it is and how easy it is to spot from a distance. So moving all the way up to it and looking down here, we see a little part that spins around that's very reminiscent of the blaze on the atmospheric thrusters. You want to move all the way up to the very top, we're going to see a very similar section, where we've got these tiny little antenna type things sticking out the top with a small green colouring. Over to this one, this is our special beacon, which is called the round beacon, which does look very good. Unlike the traditional beacon that does sort of stick out, especially with the yellow colouring on it, this one is very small and works very well with a lot of ships of signs that I've showcased on this channel. You can easily fit this in as a small bit of decoration rather than using it as its traditional function. And moving all the way up to it, we do have a smaller control box, we can't interact with it. Down here we can see some small parts coming off it. And around towards the very bottom there, we do have small bits of hazard skin around its base. If we look at it on the side, moving all the way up, there we go. Then around towards the very back of it, and then moving all the way down. There we go with that. Underneath it. And all the way up and looking down. There we are. This part at the top here was to change it to nighttime in the day settings. So over here it's the only part that will glow. So yes, unlike the traditional beacon, this thing does not stick out like a sore thumb. It's very small, very compact with its overall lighting. And like I said, it will fit on many ship designs. So putting the sunlight back to where it was, that will have to do for the moment. That will be a bit better. Moving a bit closer, what we got around here, just for a small little demonstration, is the small block version, which is very cute in comparison. It's just a very diddy version where it's still got the lights on top, still got the pointy parts on top. Moving a bit around it. There we go, it's just a very shrunk down version. It does look very nice. Anyway, grabbing hold of my counter, we now need to come across past the beacons over to this one, which is the inset tripod, which is just a tripod built into a wall block. We'll look all the way around it. There we go, we now just use this for a bit of decoration. There's your connection point on each side. There we go. So yes, we've got a bum panel on the sides. Now interact with this and do what we need to do. On the opposite side, we've got a little sticker that does act as a small little emergency button. They want to get into it and look all the way down. Just a standard cryopod. But we do have a lovely little wall. Make sure we're nice and protected. Hopping out of this, moving across over to here. This is the hollow LCD screen, which has been attached onto a steel block because it does require to be on a wall. But as like a traditional LCD screen, which comes with a very static look to it, which works very well on a retro sci-fi ship if you are going for, say, a less futuristic look on your overall design. But it does function as a standard LCD screen, it just has a different way of displaying it. It was to bring three camera over so we can get a better look at the actual project part on the top there. If we look at it like so, we can see two different parts on this. So we see a projector coming down on a diagonal. They've got the standard square that you see on a typical LCD screen. That's how they got away with actually projecting it off this part on the top there. Make it look all fancy. Back to my character moving across, this is the corner medical bay which is going to be bloody useful on a lot of bases and a lot of ships. The standard medical bay is always hard to fit in because it is quite an ugly block at the end of the day, especially when you have to be able to access the side of it to be able to heal yourself 
but this block fixes everything. So if you look at it on the side, first of all, just come around onto this section, there's your connection points, and all the way around, back over to this part, there's your sand part to change outfit and to respawn out of. But over onto this section, this is where you actually recharge yourself to heal yourself, restock your hydrogen. And we do have a little table there for the decoration. We've got a part up here that looks like a small medical cabinet. And we can just walk into this and do the standard stuff. It's a bloody good alternative to the standard medical bay, and I can see this being treated as the default medical bay block from now on. Moving across over to this, now we're getting to the inset blocks, and they all have double functionality. But this is my absolute favourite out of everything, and that is just the fish tank. By coming all the way up to it, looking at it, we've got a wide variety of fish. We see some bubble effects rise up. We would look over to here, we've got warning high pressure. Looking down at the bottom there, we can see our auction tank, where we can't interact with any of these buttons. But what will happen if we were come around onto this side, you then get an alternative view. And this is what I mean by these blocks having two different functionalities. So you can use this instead of the actual front of the block, in case you don't want to use the full-on fish tank, and you want to have this section showing as well. We just walk all the way around this. There we go. Then we can move across over to this one. So this is the inset chair block. But we're actually going to take a look at the chair a bit later on because it's further on down the line. But if you were to look at it on the side, which is this part, what we get is an alternative planter. We're coming all the way up to it. We seem to have a bunch of different plants just growing all the way up. We've got this part right here to actually feed all the plants, make sure the temperature is correct, make sure it's being watered and all that. Yes, it's just a lovely alternative to the actually standard planter, because the planter just sticks out. It's quite hard to put multiple in the same area because it ends up looking very repetitive, but being able to have this stuck into a wall means you can actually get that bit of greenery without needing to actually take over the block in front of the wall. Walking around on the side can be basically the same as what we just saw. Apart from on this back panel, which we can once again use for decoration if you just want to have this tiny little section right here. And of course on the side there's the chair, we'll take a look at that a bit later on. Over to here, this is the inset button panel, which once again, like the medical bay, I can see getting a lot of use out of. So right in the middle, we've got a standard LCD screen, so you can put your scripts on here, put on a little image if you wanted to. Then on the right hand side, these are your buttons. We simply press them, and it's just a standard button setup. If we look all the way down and around, got nothing else to fill around with, but we do have this lovely console here, just some decoration. We had to move away from this and onto the side. Here's a alternative way of using this blog where instead of having button panels, instead we get two LCD screens. Nothing on here is interactable apart from the two screens, so you could do this to have two different images on there, or even display video on one of these if you want to use the video player mod. Anyway, onto the back of it, all the way down, nothing too much else to talk about on here. Moving across over to this, this is the entertainment screen, where like the panels over there, you can just display what you want on this, but you can use this to play music. It's a glorified music block, where it has a lot of interactable parts. So walking all the way up to it, we've got our standard, we can click on the screen and change the music, change the script. But down to here, we actually have little buttons that we can play around with. So we can press the middle one to play it, and then got the go to the previous song, go to the next song. And we'll just stop that for the moment. We've got a keyboard we can interact with. We come over to here to the little remote control, where we can once again interact with it. Down to here, we've got a secondary remote control, where we can interact with it. Over to there, we can see our plushie, some books, a cub, a spider plushie, over to there, a few books, fat bringing the free camera over so we can actually get a better look at these. So we zoom all the way in, there's a the plushie, there's some of the books, we can see rocket science. There's the cup, anything inside it? No, there is not. And then across over to the books, or I suppose will be DVDs or maybe video games, go along with the console next to it. We've got compression, we've then got next, MSX, space, ammunition, authorized, MGW, made in, and then net once again. But to get a better look at the covers, because we can just about make out on this, because they put the camera very carefully through, you can just about make out the Space Engineers logo on that one. Into this one, very difficult to actually see. We can see then a warning. Over into this one, is very difficult, so I'll just stop that. Anyway, over to this, this is like a DVD player, or maybe even a video games console, where we can see once again MGW. They come all the way up to this, it says 2859B. They will come around towards the very back of this thing. <laughs> there we are. Anyway, that's all that is. If we were to grab hold of my character once again and move around onto the side, we then got this lovely section right here, which you can use as an alternative wall. Around towards the very back of it, then onto the side. There we go. We can use this for more decoration if you wanted to. Just getting close up at this, at the top there, we can see some more buttons to play around with. Can't interact with them. And looking all the way down, then got some coloured buttons. Anyway, moving across over to this, this is the Intech bookshelf where we once again got a bunch of books, the plushies return, 
and we do have a small section that we can interact with and saw a few bits and bobs inside. If we look down here, we can interact with this to access the inventory once again. And run onto the side here, we then get a small kitchen bay where we can see we've got a few mugs there just sitting around. We can interact with this top section up here to once again access the inventory. Coming all the way up to it. It's just a nice part to actually put in a proper kitchen. And speaking of kitchens, we can now move across over to this. We've got an insect kitchen block. Where instead of using that big bulky block where much like the insect chair, you don't have to take over the block in front of a wall. You now have this built into the wall. We've got our standard little kitchen block there. We see a bunch of knives. We see our fan. We see a light. We see a button that we can interact with to actually control the stuff on the jib. If we look up there, we've got an access panel to access the kitchen block. And over to here, we see our clan cola, where once again we can access that. This is more medical kids. They're down to there. It's your CO2 extinguisher. Moving away from there, onto the side. Instead of the kitchen block, we now have our sink, where once again you could use this as a full on kitchen bay with all three blocks. I should get some very good results out of this. Moving all the way up to it, there's your actual sink. Up to there, there's your microwave. There's a warning sign. Not too sure what that is. And on this side there, we can see a coffee dispenser. And yes, that's about it. Oh, we can interact with that to put more stuff inside. Round onto the back, onto the side. Not too much to talk about with that. Over here, once again, returning to the block that we saw earlier with the plants on each side. In fact, there it is right there. This is the insect couch. We can now sit into that. Bring the free camera over. And there we go. It's just simply how he sits into the wall. Once again, like the other block next to it, it saves you from putting blocks in front of a wall and taking up precious space. Bring out this, move across over to here. This is the inset bed block. In fact, bring the free camera all the way up to it to get a better look at what's going on with it. There is your plushie once again. This is more what I presume would be the clock. And we do have an access panel there that we can actually interact with and store some stuff inside the bed block. There we go. On the inside, instead of actually laying straight up, what we do do is lay on our side, which is very nice compared to the sand block, which you just end up staring at the ceiling. Grab hold my character once again, hopping out of this, move around onto the side, onto the back, and onto the opposite side. There we go. So on this side, once again, we can use this as a small locker if you want to have that built into the wall. Then moving across over to here. Now this is an absolute fantastic block. If you ever play Borderlands, you'll see what I mean by it looks very much like a reward chest. We're opening this up, you know, open it up, and we can store a surprising amount inside here. So if you wanted to, you could put this on the back of a land vehicle, rather than having a traditional cargo container all connected up, it could look very nice as a small alternative decorative piece than just having the standard square container. Over on the side there, we can see small, almost like little batteries that you pull out and shove into your vehicle. And now just close that up, walk around onto the side, onto the back, and there we go, a very nice thing I'm sure we'll get a lot of use out of. Then over to the next three, and well, I suppose four in the end there. These are decorative pieces that are very much like the freight crates, where you can access the top of these to actually put stuff inside if you wanted to, and much like the crate behind me, they can store a surprising amount inside that increases with each container added. This is just a singular one that much like the first freight crate will sit on the corner of our block. So there we go with this one. Then across to this one, we've got two of them standing up, one on their side. Entering into this one, you can see it now has 3,000. If we were to move across to this one, they're all neatly stacked together on a small pallet. If we were to come all the way up to it, look down into this, then now store 10,000. There we go, looking on the side, got some warning labels. Very nice and neatly stacked together. Over to this one, this is a explosive barrel, where, well, it's red for a reason, because it is explosive. If we were to come all the way up to it and look into the top, we can see there's basically a small little warhead with all the traditional controls. We've got a destination timer, start the countdown, stop the countdown, arm the warhead, detonate, and all of that. So you were to say you start the countdown on the 10 second timer, move away from the container, we see it's got a lovely blinking effect so you can just see it's about to explode, and after the 10 seconds, we'll then explode, and we'll behave very much like the warhead. There we go. Now hopefully that didn't destroy the stuff behind me, no it did not. Yes, it's just a alternative to the warhead, which looks very nice. But anyway, turning around and facing these ones, these are going back to the bed blocks. We've got two different types. Both of them are half block versions, where this one you just simply lay in it and simply got open sides on both sides. This one over here has now got a closed side, and we can see once again the plushie returns. In here, it's basically the same. Walking around on the side, there's the back, and there is the back of that one. Over to these ones, these are the skins you get with the pack. This is called the War Torn Skin where it adds a nice bit of decoration to the steel blocks, without physically adding decoration to the blocks yourself. So coming up to this pink one, we can see we've got a cannon shot in the middle, 
up to here we see how the edge of the steel block's been peeled away and we now see the inside of it. Over to this yellow one we see we've got a different function where it looks like we've got a panel sort of wonkly and hastily been attached on to cover up a small bit of damage. Up there once again we can see some more damage onto that. Over here we've got a few little gunshots in the middle there where it looks like we took a pretty bad one down at the bottom. And onto the green one we can see even more stuff on the inside with another hole off the side. Over to the red one a little bit of wear and tear on this one. And over here some more wear and tear. So these work very well on large battleships if you do want to have physical battle damage visible on the ship to show that it has been through a lot over time rather than actually physically damaging your ship. The way the pans work on this is they are randomised so it depends on the way you build it, depends on what you get. So as you can see around here you might get a very clean bit of block or you might get a very messy very dirty one like the one next to it. Anyway over to this one this is a small block cockpit which is called the cab cockpit which is a very ditty cockpit for a small block ship or a vehicle depending on what you want. There is no large block version of this, but as you can see, it's a very ditty little thing. We've got windows at the top there, a small door at the back, connection points on the front and the back. If you're just popping into it and looking around there, it's very cosy on the inside. We still have a standard screen at the bottom. Looking up, we've got one on the side there. Do have a nice little view all the way around us. Very good for small rovers or even small transport ships. You can easily just cover up the front of this part with steel blocks, just have this top part sticking out. Then moving on to the final part of this video, which is the scaffolding blocks. We've got a bunch of different ones that work as catwalks, which is a decoration around your ship or around your base. So this one over here has a catwalk and a ladder that allows you to go all the way up and down. Very nice stuff. Over to this one is a half block one, where once again we've got a catwalk with then a railing on the side. This one is a corner catwalk. This one is a secondary corner catwalk, which has been mirrored. Over to this one, this is a straight, so we'll walk all the way through it. There we go. Then onto this one, this is another half block one with no catwalk in the middle. This is another corner one with no catwalk. Then we've got a triangular one. And then we've got a standard four block one that we can't walk through. There we go. In fact, we might be able to walk through there. Crouch, yes you can. So do excuse that. I'm not too sure what to make of these ones right here. They look very nice, especially the catwalk ones. But the ones without catwalks, I'm having trouble seeing what they could actually be used for. Because they are quite an expensive block. You have to come into this. There they are. They take 10 small steel tubes and 20 girders, so it's not as cheap as using a standard steel block and just not repairing it up. But I suppose you could make use of these in a small warehouse. The catwalk ones, you can definitely see a lot of use coming out of these, especially going around the top of a very large areas such as a hangar bay, or a warehouse, a garage, or any other large structures. That is it for this video. I'm not going to cover the stuff added with the base game because everybody gets access to that. I prefer sticking to the DLC packs. But I hope this video was helpful, and I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.